You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather this day to give thanks and praise to our God as we celebrate this feast, this uh, memorial of St. Peter Claver. He was born in, let me get my information out here. I looked it up earlier. Sorry. He was born in Spain in 1580. He joined the Jesuits in 1600 and worked in the missions in South America during the slave trade. He tended to the new slaves from Africa, giving them water, food, and medicine, and served them for 40 years. He gave his life in service to them and died in 1654. Today we honor his memory, his work among the people in, the, in, the, in, that na in those nations. And we, tonight we celebrate the First Communion of Emma as well. She's gathered here joyfully to celebrate this wonderful sacrament. <laughs> so let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries as we now pause. We call to mind the times when we have failed to serve God's people, especially the poor among us, for the times that we have failed to love as God has first loved us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Peter, Peter Claver a slave of slaves, and strengthen him with wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, grant through his intercession that, seeking the things of Jesus Christ, we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, let each of you lead the life that the Lord has assigned, to which God called you. This is my rule in all the churches. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give my opinion as one who, by the Lord's mercy, is trustworthy. I think that, in view of the impending crisis, it is well for you to remain as you are. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you do not sin. And if a virgin marries, she does not sin. Yet those who marry will experience distress in this life, and I would spare you that. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice 
as though they were not rejoicing. And those who buy, as though they had no possessions. And those who deal with the world, as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. Hear, O daughter. Consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty since he is your Lord. Bow to him. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. All glorious is the princess in her chamber. The princess is decked with golden robes. In many colored robes she is led to the king. Behind her, the virgins, her companions, follow. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In the place of ancestors, you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. Listen, Listen to me, me, daughter. See and bend your ear. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when you exclude and they exclude you, revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to the one who is rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. If we look deep, we have to look deep, we hear that the readings today, first reading and our gospel, speak about the kingdom. In that first reading, they, Paul is speaking to them about being prepared for the end times, for the kingdom. Jesus also speaks about this kingdom as well, as he gives us Luke's gospel, we hear Luke's gospels of the Beatitudes, speaking about the kingdom of God. And what better way to celebrate today First Communion? Because the Eucharist, the Eucharist is a great
glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. For Emma today, it will be the first time that she'll receive this great gift that comes from God. This gift of bread that's been transformed into the body of Christ. We are that body of Christ. And we are called to support one another. Especially this young one, Emma, as she receives communion for the first time. Weeks ago, actually last month, one of the young ones gave me a prayer for priests. And in that prayer, it talked about how the Mass, the first, my first Mass is supposed to be like the last Mass that I celebrate. And in the same way, we need to think about how we receive our, our first communion is going to be maybe the last time as well too. Because we're preparing ourselves for the kingdom. Jesus is sharing something with us that is divine, that comes from the kingdom. And so for you, Emma, as you receive this first communion tonight, I pray that every time will be a most special time for you and for all of us as well. Right? It's like we're receiving Jesus for the very first time, but also for the last time as well. Because we don't know when the end times will come. And Paul was preparing those people in that first reading for the end times. They thought that Christ would come right away. Well, he will. We don't know when he will. But it will be soon. Soon and very soon, as we often sing. But let us continue to recognize this gift of the Eucharist. This gift which is from the divine. This gift which calls us to be transformed, not of this world, but of the kingdom. This sacrament you're celebrating to Emma today is preparing you for the kingdom of God. It's preparing each and every one of us. Let us pray that we are transformed by this great gift of the Eucharist today and all. Now we come before our Heavenly Father, offering our prayers for the needs of the church and for this world. Let us pray for our church, that we indeed may live out the gospel values, the beatitudes that Christ has left us to build up his kingdom here on earth, to prepare ourselves for that new life in the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for our world leaders and government leaders, that they may be true shepherds to the people they are called to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the sick among us, especially those suffering through the coronavirus, that they may know God's healing power and presence in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray in thanksgiving for nurses and doctors, for healthcare workers and essential workers, who continue to bravely serve the needs of God's people during this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for Emma and for each of us as we come to Gat to celebrate this Eucharist, that once again we may be transformed by this bread of life, that we may become the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all those who have died, we especially remember uh, Martha Wick, whose funeral will be celebrated tomorrow in Godrich, that she and all those who have, who have died may know the joys of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And we pray for the intentions of this Mass, which are being offered for uh, Matthew and Cody Ducharme, and for the intentions of Ray and Janice Hartman. We pray to the Lord. Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, you sent forth your Son, Jesus Christ, that may, he may offer us his life for us, his, the bread that becomes his body. May that Eucharist strengthen us daily and transform us into the body of Christ so that we may be prepared for the kingdom of heaven. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed St. Peter, so that, as you have brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, Grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown our own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter Claver, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Ronald Peter, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
like to invite Emma to stand and come up.
our communion antiphon, blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of St. Blessed Peter Claver, that they may pr preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. I'll invite Emma to come forward, receive her certificate of First Communion. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not.